Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we finished introduction to anatomy. I asked my students which topic would you like to see next and they said head and neck anatomy for sure. So today we will open a new page and we'll start talking about head and neck anatomy. The head is made of the skull. The neck has the vertebral column. In your neck, you have cervical vertebrae. The word cervix or cervical means neck, just like the neck of the uterus, also known as the cervix. So let's get into this. Anatomy was resting after its labors under Vesalius. The great name here as well as in surgery is Girolamo Fabrizio di Acqua Pendente, pupil of Fallopio, who discovered the fallopian tube, and teacher of Harvey who discovered the circulatory system of the blood. Although he was preceded by Ibn al-Nafis or Ala al-Din Abu al-Hasan Ali ibn Abi Hazm al-Qarshi al-Damashqi, the Arab polymath who discovered the pulmonary circulation in the 13th century. Harvey took Galen to the cleaners by showing that blood does not jump from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart through the septum. Before that, many people thought that the only source of blood in your body is the food that you eat. But Harvey said, no, it actually circulates. This video is part of my anatomy playlist. Some medicosis tips to help you study anatomy. Number one, understand that anatomy is a language. You gotta get the lingo right. Anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal. What does epi mean? What does peri mean? Etc. The worst way to study anatomy is to read your freaking professor's PowerPoint while laying on the couch. That's a horrible way to do it. The best way to do it is to draw your own diagrams on paper, not on the eye iPad, no, 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 on paper with pencil or pen. Use a handful of colors. For example, one color for the bones, another color for the muscles, a third color for cartilage, red for arteries, blue for veins, yellow or brown for nerves, etc, etc. You will need a book that has text, another book that's an atlas, and do not try to learn everything at the same time. It will drive you nuts. Learn incrementally. Take baby steps. And you need to talk out loud. Do not just look at this. Oh, a perinephric fat. No, just read it out loud. Perinephric fat. The fat around the kidney is the perinephric fat. This is the renal pelvis. This is the ureter. The right kidney is lower than the left kidney because the liver is pushing on the right kidney but not the left kidney. Talk out loud. Repeat. Practice active recall. Revisit the same topic today and tomorrow and next week and next month, etc. Five years from now, ten years from now, you will see your book with your notes and you will remember these moments. On the other hand, the chance that you will reopen your professor PowerPoint five years from now is almost almost zero. Moreover, my book does not distract me. Your iPad does. Do not kid yourself. Should I make more videos on how to study during medical school? Let me know in the comments. The skull. The skull is the skeleton of the head. Any skeleton is made of what? Bones and joints. What's the name of the joint between skull bones? We call them sutures. And if you've watched my previous videos, I want you to answer this question. What type of joints are sutures? Are they fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, or synovial joints? Let me know the answer in the comment section. How many bones do we have in the skull? 22 bones. Only one of them is freely mobile, which is the mandible. The other 21 bones are immovable. Let's divide these 21 immovable bones into paired, i.e. right and left pair of bones, and unpaired. The unpaired include frontal, forehead, ethmoid, near your eyes, sphenoid, okie dokie, it's a very big bone, occipital, the back of your skull, and the vomer. We'll talk about that later. How about the paired structures? You have two parietal bones, you have two temporal bones, look at that's your temple right here. Lacrimal bones, also near your eyes, nasal bones, right and left. Inferior conche are their own bones, right and left. Palatine bones, they make the roof of your mouth posteriorly. How about the maxilla? They make the roof of your mouth anteriorly. What's the name of the roof of the mouth? The palate. As Gordon Ramsay might say, hey, big boy, listen, I 
have a million dollar palette. F me, it's raw. Then we have the right zygomatic and left zygomatic bones. Next, the skull could be divided into the cranium, which surrounds your brain, and the facial skeleton. This is the face. So the cranium is the superior and posterior part of the skull, but the facial skeleton is the anterior part of the skull. The upper part of the facial skeleton is immobile. How about the lower part? It is movable. Next, how do you look at the skull, the views or the aspects of the skull? I can look from front. This is called norma frontalis. I can look from behind, norma occipitalis. I can look from above, norma verticalis. I can look from below, norma basalis. I can look from the side, norma lateralis. And I can look from inside. So I remove the skull cap and look inside, which will enable me to see your brain. This is called the cranial cavity. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop a skull emoji in the comments. And if you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionaries.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Normal lateralis is here, lateral view. Look at this, that's the cranium, superior and posterior part of the skull. How about that, facial skeleton? Immovable, movable. The mandible is a movable bone. This joint is a synovial joint. That's why it's going to be affected in diseases that cause synovitis, such as rheumatoid arthritis. Many patients with rheumatoid arthritis have a TMJ dysfunction. What's T? Temporo. What's the M? Mandibular. J? Joint. This order. It's very painful. So rheumatoid arthritis can affect the TMJ joint as well as the atlantoaxial joint between C1 and C2, because that's also a synovial joint. Rheumatoid equals synovitis. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Now, quiz time. Can you answer these yourself? Please pause. Let's do it. This is the frontal bone in front. This is the occipital bone in the back. Anterior, posterior. How about C? Parietal bone. D. Temporal bone. E. Sphenoid bone. You only have one sphenoid bone. And it goes from the right side all the way to the left side over there. How about F. Nasal bone. You have one on the right, one on the left. G. Zygomatic bone. H is the maxilla and I is the mandible. I know that you struggle before exams, so let me know about a brand new playlist. You can find all of my review videos in a glorious playlist titled A 90 Minutes Quick Review, where you will find review videos for the anatomy of the head, review videos for the anatomy of the neck, review videos for the anatomy of the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis and perineum, upper extremities, lower extremities, embryology, and neuroanatomy. Each one of these regions is reviewed in three videos. Part 1 is titled Quick Review, Part 2 is Ultimate Review, and Part 3 is Clinically Oriented Anatomy of that Region. So there is Quick Review for the Anatomy of the Thorax, Ultimate Review of the Anatomy of the Thorax, and Clinically Oriented Anatomy of the Thorax. If you can just watch these videos, you will know more anatomy than the vast majority of people who live on this planet. But wait, there is more. I have review videos for physiology, review videos for biochemistry, for molecular biology, genetics, pharmacology, pathology, and I cannot forget microbiology. There is a review video for general micro on the gram-positive bacteria, the gram-negative bacteria, the viruses, the fungi, and human parasitology. And I have review videos for internal medicine, two review videos for cardiology, two on neurology, two on pulmonology, endocrinology, hematology, oncology, immunology, rheumatology, nephrology, GI, dermatology, ophthalmology, ENT, infectious diseases, geriatrics, and EKG. And a review video for emergency medicine. If you want me to make review videos on these topics, please let me know in the comments. You'll find several review videos for surgery, as well as pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology. All of them are in my playlist titled In 90 Minutes Quick Review. And back to the video. Let's look at the skull from above, Norma Verticalis. Can you pause and try to answer these yourself? Here is my frontal bone. It's just one structure. How about B and C? Left and right parietal bones. How about D? You have one occipital bone. In the next videos, we'll talk about a muscle that spans from here all the way until here. You can call it frontal occipitalis or occipitofrontalis muscle.
Next, let's name one, two, and three, which are sutures. Here is the coronal suture. The word coronal means like a crown. How about this one? That's my sagittal suture. And then look at this. It looks like the Greek letter lambda. So it's called the lambdoid suture. Next, let's look at a frontal view or norma frontalis of your skull. Please pause. What's A? Frontal bone. Only one. Unpaired. How about B? Nasal bones. One on the left, one on the right. C is the left zygomatic bone. D, left maxilla. And E is the left mandible. What's one? One is the orbit or the orbital cavity or the orbital aperture. How about two? Anterior, nasal, aperture. Aperture means opening, just like the aperture of the camera. If you are a freaking photographer, you know that the aperture of the lens is a big deal. What's the name of the suture? Oh, it goes anterior to posterior. That's my sagittal suture. How about the suture that goes left to right or right to left? That's the coronal suture. Next, let's look at the skull from behind, posterior view or norma occipitalis. What's A, please? A is the left parietal bone. B, right parietal bone. C, occipital bone. If you are sophisticated, it's the squamous, i.e. flat, part of the occipital bone because the occipital bone has different parts, as we will discuss later. How about D? That's my left mastoid process, which is part of the temporal bone, your temples. How about this one? That's the right mastoid process. What do you call it if my mastoid process is inflamed? Mastoiditis. Is this good? No, it's not good. It's, it's bad. Why? Because it can spread to the brain. That will be disastrous. What's F? This is something called sutural bone, sometimes present here. Next, let's talk about sutures. One is the sagittal suture, two is the lambdoid suture, three and four are points. Three is called the lambda, which is the union between the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture. What's number four? Well, it looks like an asterisk. We call it asterion, like a star. What's number five? Well, I do not know. It's this hard. Okay, but it's a suture between occipital bone and the mastoid process. So it's called occipitomastoid suture. How about this suture? It's between the parietal and the mastoid. What do you call it? Uh, parietomastoid suture? Brilliant. Next, from below, inferior view or norma occipitalis. What's this bone? Roman numeral number one. This is the maxilla. One on the left, one on the right. How about two? Palatine bones. This is your upper jaw. Anteriorly, you have two maxillae. And posteriorly, you have two palatine bones. When we say bones, it's your hard palate. After this, there is soft palate. What is number three? It's one humongous bone from left to right, and this is called the sphenoid bone. What's four? That's my temporal bone. And five is occipital bone. You have two temporal bones, one on the right, one on the left, but you have one occipital bone. Next, let's talk about openings in the skull, known as foramina. Singular is foramen. Look at this one. It's oval, foramen ovale. How about this one? Oh, it's more circular, more tapered, foramen spinosum, tapered like a spine. What is this lacerated foramen? Foramen lacerum. And then D and E. One is for a big artery. This is the carotid foramen. And one is for a big vein, jugular foramen. G is when the brain becomes the spinal cord, foramen magnum. It's a very big magnum foramen. And what's that F? It's between the styloid process and the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Between styloid and mastoid, ergo, stylomastoid foramen. There you go. A quick review on skull bones. Please pause and review. We will dig deeper in the upcoming videos. Anatomy is fun. Learning is fun. Some words of wisdom. From cradle to grave. From top to bottom, i.e. from vertex to to heal from the ante to the post from the nasion this point right here to the inion this point right here in today's video you only looked at my illustrations but if you want more realistic bones go to my anatomy playlist click on my video titled anatomy of the head and you will find more realistic anatomy pictures with explanations of course here is an outline of all of the topics covered in my review videos on the anatomy of the head and on the anatomy of the neck.
You can find both of them in my anatomy playlist or in my in 90 minutes quick review playlist. If you want to take it to the next level by learning about trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, vascular surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yield course at metacosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about kidney function, download my renal physiology course. If you find these videos to be helpful, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash metacosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel. When you click the join button and choose the highest tier please subscribe hit the bell smash like support my channel on patreon paypal or venmo go to my website to download my courses notes and cases or if you would like me to personally tutor you be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionalis where medicine chemistry math and physics make perfect sense